no sign of him yet? No. Nick, what makes you so sure it's Browse we're after? One of the newest hands at the ranch, is why. That's no reason, though. Well, he told me himself he used to hang around Cherokee Strip. Well, so did I once. But that don't make a man a thief. Well, I got it all figured out. Scientifically, right from this book. Isn't that one of the books Jared brought home? That's right. And this, uh, Winfield, he's got it all figured out. Says you can spot a criminal by his face. His ears, for example. By his what? His ears. Now, the way I make it out is that you, uh, draw a line straight back from a man's eye. And if his ear falls below that line, he's a criminal. That's all? That's it. So, we started missing things around the ranch, and, uh, well, I started taking a closer look at all the hands. And you came up with Bill Browse? He's got the lowest ears. <laughs> Quiet. Shh. Well, we'll see who laughs now. It's Bill Bryles. What are you doing out here? What do you mean, what am I doing out here? Just answer the question. Now, look, I didn't do nothing wrong. What's going on here? We just caught ourselves a thief. Nick, Bryles and I rode out here together looking for you. He could still be the thief. Nick, not 20 minutes ago, somebody broke into the tack room and stole four of our best saddles. That's what we rode out here to tell you. Well, now, how do you know it wasn't him? Because he was standing right beside me when it happened. Oh. Nick, why don't you let the sheriff handle these things? Do that, will you, Nick? Maybe you got it wrong, Nick. Maybe we're supposed to be on the lookout for people with high ears. Chapter four, suspects. for a beer. You buy it? Uh, all right. Well, what do you know? I got to go over to the office first, sign a couple of papers. And I'll wait inside. Uh, Nick, you'd have just about enough time to go see the sheriff. Oh, I'll get around to that. Oh, uh, by the way, here's something you can have. Winfield, mm -hmm. huh? So that's what that ear business was all about. A lot he knows. Well, if you'd asked, Nick, before you ran off playing detective, I could have told you there's no proof his system works. I got proof it don't. Oh, oh, what's all the excitement? Beer. Oh, no, 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 whiskey. Whiskey. Did you catch your thief? They just pour the whiskey. You didn't catch him. Anyone ask you? I never knew you detective fellows were so temperamental.
Maggie, I remember the good old days when bartenders used to mind their own business. Hmm, I remember the good old days, too. You know, there hasn't been a big spender in here since the 4th of July. Well, here's the big spender. Hmm. Right. The town's full of drovers now, and they don't get paid until all cattle are sold. Well, nothing to do but wait. Well, you're waiting through, lady. <laughs> here, play some. You, uh, dance? Why not? I think we better sit this one out. I just saw you want a little excitement, honey. Watch it, Sonny. Say, how old are you, anyhow? Old enough, sister. Hey, there's enough here to set him up for everybody. Wait a minute, boy. Put that money back in your pocket. Hey, why don't you stick your nose back into your own business, mister? What's the matter? Didn't you hear me? You put that bottle back up here on this bar, right now. Listen, don't worry about it, mister. There's enough here to buy this whole stinking place. I don't care how much is there. I don't sell the kids. Now, give me that bottle. Now, you don't want to shoot the best bartender in Stockton, do you? Mm. I told you to cut it out. Now, hold it. Well, a bunch of real sports, huh? What's your name, mister? Who, me? Nick. Nick Barkley. Oh, what's yours? Danny. Just Danny. And you want to remember that, Barkley. Oh, Danny, I sure will remember it. Here, you take this gun. Put it back in your holster and leave it there. Now you better get on home before your folks start wondering where you are. <laughs> Who's the desperado? You were lucky you weren't gunned down. Harry, give my brother here something for his nerves, will you? You know, I think I've seen that kid somewhere before. That kid's hard to overlook. Give me one, too, will you, Harry? What was going on? Well, first of all, he came in here. He's going to buy the place a drink. Then he's going to buy the place. <laughs> then he's going to shoot Harry. <laughs> Sheriff catches him running around with that gun on. He's going to be in a mess of trouble. Oh, he and trouble aren't too much strangers, I'm afraid. You know, Nick, mm. he reminds me of somebody I used to know. Yeah, who? You, when you were about that age. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. I can remember you getting bailed out of quite a few scrapes when you were no older than he is. Two of a kind, huh? Wiggins. Wiggins who? Well, that's what that boy's name is, Daniel Wiggins. I can remember I did some legal work for his parents when they moved here about a year ago. What kind of parents let a boy out like that? They probably don't know who he is. I think it was a doctor at Mrs. Wiggins. I made some kind of a financial arrangement to keep him in school up in San Francisco. They live out on the north side of town, just beyond the stage stop. Well, that boy doesn't straighten out. He's never going to see the best side of 16. Oh, he'll probably grow out of it, grow up to be mayor. Mm hmm probably. Uh, Nick, speaking of city officials, when are you going to go see the sheriff? I was going to go over there. Uh... Well, of course not. If you're a little too embarrassed to let him know that you've been doing detective work on your own, I'll be I'm very... I'm going. Happy. And Harry, he's by. Wiggins? Yes, what is it? Well, uh, my name's Nick Barkley. And, uh, well, I know it's none of my business, but uh, it's about your son, Danny. What on earth are you talking about? 
Well, well, he seems to be making quite a show of himself around town, and I thought maybe you and the good doctor should know about it before he gets into trouble. Mr. Barkley, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have a son. Well, but you, you just said that... Uh... I believe my wife was quite explicit, sir. We do not have a son. I... Now, good day, sir. so busy in town that, well, I... Nick? Jared, uh, you said the doctor and Mrs. Wiggins live out by the old stage stop, right? Yeah, that's right. I went out to see them. You know what they told me? No, I don't know what they told you. They didn't even have a son. Well, they do. Well, now, why would they say such a thing, then? I don't know, but what I am interested in is what the sheriff intends to do about our two missing horses and five of our best saddles. Will you stop pushing? I intend telling him. When? Nick, are you going to help me move that herd saddle or not? Heath, you're the one I've been waiting for. Come on, let's go. Nick! You coming? Where have you been? Oh, I'm out there in the barn getting the gear ready. In the barn? Ain't no work in the barn. The work's out where I am. Well, you should get in a hurry. Hey! My saddle! It's gone! Out again? Yeah, this thief must be half Indian. He sure knows how to cover tracks. Just got that saddle broke in good, too. Looks like I'm gonna have to break in another one. All right. I think it's best I wouldn't see the sheriff. Come on, Coco, get up. Yeah. Yeah. Four days. You finally get around to telling me about it. There were reasons, Fred. Yeah, sure. Is this all you're missing? Up till now. I haven't checked in the past ten minutes. Get in line and take your turn. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Well, it means this, Nick. For the last two weeks, there's been a rash of thievery. Every outlying ranch for 15 miles has been hit. You think it's a gang or something? I don't know. Well, there have been some drovers in town, but I haven't made up my mind yet. No clues? Nothing? Nothing. Nobody's heard anything. Nobody's seen anything. I circled every branch, looking for tracks. The few tracks I found just petered out before they led anywhere. Yeah, Heath and I had the same kind of luck. Yeah. Nick, I'll do the best I can. Thank you, Fred. I'll see you later. said I wanted words with you, boy. Well, I don't want none with you. Don't you get smart with me. Just stay away from me. Why'd you come back here? Well, I'll tell you. I knew you'd be worried about me. Daddy. You touch me one more time and I'll blow your head off. You murderous little savage. Get out of this town before something happens. Go away, for your mother's sake. <laughs> what are you whispering about, huh? You afraid somebody's gonna hear? <laughs> She's my mother! She's my... Thank you. 
Barkley, I want to talk to you. Well, I should have figured. Why did you follow me, Barkley? You set that trap for me out there. Uh-huh. Sue Deer trap. You walked right into it. Visitors not welcome. You sure were hanging high and loose out there. Trap a man like you trap a wild animal. That's very funny. This whole roof would come down on top of you. You know that. Oh, just so you know. <laughs> you steal all this stuff, did you? What are you, 14 years old? You, uh, you recognize this, Barkley? It's my saddle. I told you in the saloon you'd have reason to remember me. I sure can pick the ones to help out, can I? I don't need any help. You sure did when you got into it with your old man in the middle of that street. If you'd left us alone, I'd have killed him. Your own father. He's not my father. Now shut up about it. You got me here. What do you plan on doing with me? I ain't decided. Well, now, sooner or later, you're going to have to turn me loose. You sure about that? Now, let's see. What do you want for supper? Canned beef? Truffles? Caviar? Caviar? Well, it's a little too fancy for a Barkley, isn't it? All right, we'll just have beans. <clears throat>
You know where you are? Sure. Worked out mine. Not worked out. Abandoned. What's the difference? There's a big difference. This is the old Ophir mine. Sixteen men were buried alive here. That's why they closed it up. This whole mountain's faulted and shifting. Well, then nobody will come nosing around, will they? <laughs> you know, uh, you never did answer about why you followed me. What difference does that make? Let's get back to this little business of yours, shall we? How to get rid of all this stuff? Well, you see, I, uh... I sell this junk cheap to storekeepers. They don't ask questions as long as they make a neat profit. We're all thieves together. Uh -huh. Is that what you plan to be when you grow up? A thief? I just practice what the good book says. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I've had mighty good teachers. You seen Nick? And I figure he left early. His bed wasn't slept in last night. Well, maybe you met a pretty girl in town last night. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we better take a little look around for him. If he shows up grinning, full of some wild story, you can help me break his foolish neck. Shaking that you won't have to worry about ever getting loose. Well, I got it figured out now what I'm going to do with you. I'm afraid uh, I'm not going to bring very much from your business partners. Well, no, probably not. But how much you figure you're worth to your family? What are you getting at? Well, I figure I'll ransom you. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not going to bring much there either. Well, I'm not greedy. Now, let's see. Uh, I need enough to get me set up in style somewhere else. But not so much that they're going to have trouble getting it in cash. Danny, you know what you're talking about. You're talking about kidnapping. Now, there's a big difference in that and stealing things to trade for food to eat. You think that sheriff's going to see the difference? There's a big difference. They catch up with you on something like this, uh, well, I can't help you. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's what you followed me out here to do, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, just untie those ropes and you'll make everything all right. I can try, Danny. <laughs> Danny, I could try. I could say I got thrown off my horse and you found me and helped me out. And that's all that happened. They'll believe me. $5,000. That's what they're going to believe, Barkley. $5,000. Now, let's see here. Two, the Barclays. If you want Nick back alive, get $5,000 in cash, have Mrs. Barkley deliver to Indian Springs at noon today. I'll be watching. No trick.
or no neck. There, that ought to do it. Yeah, that ought to do it. First step to you being hanged. Uh, catching a Sioux ain't that easy. You're no Sioux. That's where you're wrong. Danny Running Dog, that's me. Danny Wiggins. Wiggins? Yeah. That's his name, not mine. He's her husband, that's all he is. Who's your father? Maybe these looks of mine got you fooled. My father was an Indian. Running dog. It was his name. He uh, took my mother from a wagon train. Later, they, they rescued her. When I was born, she wouldn't even look at me. So they sent you away? Yeah, but I kept running off to go back to her. She hated me. I never could understand why. And then he told me. He told me who I really was. Five thousand dollars, Barkley. That's all I'm going to think about now. say we don't have much choice get the sheriff. No. You don't think you're going out there alone? Yes, I am, just as soon as you bring me the money from the bank. Now, look, we don't know who we're dealing we with We are here. dealing with Nick's life. I'm aware of that, Mother, but we're not going to save his life by doing what that note says. The note says if you want Nick back alive. Now, that seems plain enough. No, it isn't plain enough. Believe me, I know something about the pattern of kidnappers. They're scared. Once they get the money, they... They usually kill their victims so they can't identify them. Nick is safe as long as he's of value. After that, there's no telling. Well, they... Last year, when they kidnapped the Tompkins boy, they, they let him go. They probably felt sorry for him. But it's more likely they knew he was too young to identify them. We could hide out early near Indian Springs. Catch him as he picks up the money. And if you don't, if something goes wrong? I don't want to do anything that will jeopardize any chance Nick might have. All right. We'll get the money. Jared, he's... Get the sheriff. You 
still worried about your neck? Both our necks. Well, they have that note by now. Next thing they'll hightail in into town and get that money out of the bank. You know, you, uh, you ain't near as talkative as you were. I was just thinking... Thinking about how much you're like you and I are. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm serious. I remember when I was about your age, my father gave me a horse. And he told me the day I learned to ride that horse, I'd become a man. Yeah, and I suppose you went right out and rode him, huh? No, no, no. No, that old horse threw me farther than most crows fly. It's quite a horse, though. I remember I used to go into the barn at night to sleep just to be near him. You know that I'm, uh, I'm not interested in your horse or your story. Oh, I love that animal. But he didn't love me too much, though. One time I went in to curry and groom him. He liked to kill me. Something about that horse, he just hated the sight of me. So I decided that I'd hate him just as much as he hated me. I took my rifle. I went into the barn, and I aimed that old rifle right between his eyes. I couldn't pull the trigger. Why not? Because I found I still loved him. And all of a sudden, I understood there was nothing I could do about the way he felt about me. So I knew what I had to do. I had to walk away from him. I had to forget him. I had to start thinking of something else, something bigger, something more important to do with my life. I had to go on living, Danny. For myself. I'd have pulled the trigger. Shoot my mother, are you? No. It's your brothers I'll be looking out for. Danny, supposing all this goes according to your plan, you get the money, then what? Hold up here till dark and get as far away as I can before morning. What about me? First town I go through, I'll drop a note to your folks so I'm where to find you. Uh, Danny, hold up a minute. Wait a minute. Look, uh, it's not too late, you know. You can call this whole thing off. I know nothing about the law, but my brother's a lawyer. He does, and... Well, maybe between he and myself, well, we can straighten this thing out for you. Leastwise, we'll stick with you. I can't. I haven't got any choice now. Can't you understand that? I could tell you it was going to seem shorter. Just as long as he shows up.
What are you doing here? Just hunt rabbits, sir. Well, hunt them someplace else. Sure, Sheriff, but what's happening? What's going on? Never mind. Get back there and stay out of sight. Yes, sir. Let's get the horses. Our horses, they're gone. $5,000. Maybe you can use that to buy over your mother. There's a thousand dollars to make her admit you exist. Shut up! And another thousand dollars to make her look at you. I'm warning you! And you can always use the rest of it to make her love you. I said shut up! That's the end of the tracks. Well, at least we know he was in this area. Van Art, keep your eyes open. Danny! Danny, you all right? Can you move? Can you move your legs? I guess we're, we're in somewhat of a mess, huh? Yeah, you could say that. You know, there's no reason for you to believe me now. But I was gonna leave a knife where you could get to it. With a little work. Why, Dan? I don't know for sure. But it doesn't matter now. It matters, Danny. It matters. We're both gonna get out of here together. It's too late, Nick. No, Danny. It's not too late. It's never too late. Danny, the 
cleaver. The cleaver over there, can you reach it? It's right next to your right arm. Try to reach it. Reach out for it. That's it. Come on, Danny. Try. Come on, boy. Your gun. Can you reach your gun? Can you get to it? It'll give you more reach. Now get out of here! Come on, Danny, we're going out of here together. Look, Danny. I can't promise you that, that your mother will ever change, but I'll help you, Danny. Our whole family will. No. Now you try and move me, and the rest of that ceiling's gonna come down. Danny, we're going out of here together. Besides, black Irishman and half Indian, well, that's a team that's pretty hard to beat. What do you say? Come on.
Couldn't find him? No. We looked everywhere. Including the saloon. I thought he liked it here. He did. Maybe he was just putting on an act. Oh, I don't believe that. Neither do I. You wouldn't run out on me. Well, and I feel, Nick, that he wouldn't be the first backslider we've run into. Still think something's happened to him. Why don't we give the back range one more circle? All right. Well, what happened to you? Miss Barkley? I, I know it cost plenty squaring all the things I took, so I... Well, I dug this up for you. You mean to tell me you went back into that mine after I gave you orders not to, knowing full well that a good sneeze and the whole thing had come down on top of you? Don't you listen to anybody? Only when they're right. <laughs> ah, come on, get cleaned up, boy. Come on, move. <laughs> Dr. Eagle. Sure didn't expect to see you driving this stage. Well, I had no choice, honey. Something happened to the driver? Hmm. Yeah, a couple of fellas held us up four or five miles out of town, you know. They nicked the driver here in the shoulder. Uh, a couple of you boys get a hand. Get them out of here. Come on, Archie. All right, boy. Did you recognize them? Didn't have time to recognize them. Just shot them. All right, get the man over to the doctor now. Well, a term in Congress doesn't seem to have spoiled your aim, Senator. Why should it? We're always taking pot shots at one another in the Senate chamber, huh? <laughs> well, I certainly didn't expect anything like this. A warm welcome homecoming. I want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Thank you, one and all. Yeah. Stock and Eagle, eh? Well, Senator. Well, now. I hardly expected a welcome from the opposition. I'm not extending one, I assure you. I live here at the hotel. I thought maybe you'd come to bury the hatchet, Your Honor. My party's never going to make peace with gunslinger politics, Bennett. No matter how colorful I may seem. 
Uh, sometimes I get the feeling that Judge Daggett doesn't approve of me. <laughs> How about a statement, Senator? Why, uh, just one second. I'd be glad to advise you, young man. Thank you. I don't make no bones about it. I've come back to run for re-election. I want the job, I can do the job, and I'm the best doggone man in the world for the job. I'll second that. Victoria Buckley, you are a sight for hungry I eyes. I heard you were coming to Stockton. Is Amelia with you? No, no, she's still in Washington. Oh. We thought the trip might be a little too much for her. What are you doing here? I thought you'd be at the ranch. Oh, we're having the house renovated, and I'm staying here till it's finished. Family with you? I'm beginning to wonder if I have a family this week. Nick and Heath are out on the range, Jared's staying in the bunkhouse, and Audra's in New York. Little lot in New York. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a lot of catching up to do. Almost six years. Say, what about tonight, dinner, huh? Just the two of us, we can fill in all the gaps. It sounds wonderful. About seven o'clock in the dining room. Fine. Victoria. Hmm? Are you still found a pheasant and a chilled bottle of Chablis? Mm -hmm. And our Chablis was particularly good this past year. It's a shame we can't arrange with a hotel to furnish us with a gypsy orchestra. <laughs> Your company is enough, Jim. See you. It's Dr. Nagel, huh? That's right, Senator. How are you? Oh, uh, you sure and spell the name right. <laughs> I knew Ben had once courted Victoria Barclay before he got married. But I never realized their relationship was so... so close. The time I was in Washington, I think, one of the most difficulty I had was trying to learn two things. First, how to control my temper, and secondly, how to balance one of those silly little teacups on my knee. <laughs> well, apparently you managed both very well. I didn't hear of a single incident while you were in Washington. No. No, otherwise there wouldn't have been an opposition senator or a teacup left in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> you. No, oh, you're absolutely right, Victoria. This Chablis is excellent. We had a lot of rain last year, and that makes a great difference. Mm -hmm. Now it bears out what I've always said. You know, given proper irrigation, there, there isn't anything you couldn't raise in California. Why, it could be the greatest, the richest agricultural center in the world. Well, I imagine we'll come to that someday. If, 
If only we could convince people like William Daggett that the most important problem is water. What we need is, a, is an aqueduct, a canal system of some kind, you know? No. no. All they can think about is how much money it's going to cost, not how much money it will eventually earn for the state. You know, they're blind. They have no foresight. They're, well, they're just not in touch with destiny. You really believe in this state, don't you? Yes, I do, Victoria. Yeah, I was raised in the CR, as you know. Brought up, schooled in a gold mining town. I guess I'm just part of the dust and the dream. I suppose we all are. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. And so, to destiny. <laughs> oh, I've missed you in a minute of these past years. I wish you were here. So do I, Victoria, but our doctor advised against me. <laughs> are you blind? Huh? Why don't you watch where you're going? Oh, it's all right, That's a clumsy boy. Now, now wait nice a minute. Day. Wait a minute. I want to make it up to the little lady. Take your hands off. Now, come on, little lady. I'm going to buy you. Take your, your hands off her. Drunken fool. Jim, What's Jim. What's the No, no. You all right? I had that coming. Sorry, ma'am. Yes, I haven't learned to control my temper as well as I thought. I'm sorry, Victoria. Mm -hmm. Who is it? Message from Senator Bannard. Just a minute. He's in room 20, ma'am. What happened? What happened? Nothing. What, what do you mean? But this note, it said to come here right away. Well, I didn't write you any notes. Well, I don't understand. No, neither do I. What is this? Where, who bought you this? Well, one of the clerks, I guess. I don't know. I was half awake. I merely glanced at him. Yeah, I don't like the looks of this. Oh, we uh, better get you back to your room. Hold it, Senator!
figured Daggett was desperate, but I didn't think he'd be this desperate. George Daggett? Oh, no, no, I've known him for years. I, I, I don't agree with him politically any more than you do, but this... I'm afraid you've got a lot to learn about politics, Victoria. His only chance of winning this election is to discredit me. Yeah, and looks like the honorable judge has embarked on a smear campaign. Well, what are you going to do? Victoria, this is going to be bad enough for me, but I'll be... I'm not going to let him drag you into it, and the sooner he knows that, the better. But you haven't any proof if you start trouble. I didn't start the trouble. He did. All right, all right. At least talk to Jared first. Find out where you stand legally. But this may not even be politics. No, there are some people in this valley that don't particularly care for the Barclays. It could be aimed at me. All right. Jared at the ranch? We'll be there in an hour. <laughs> all set up in advance. The camera, ladder at the window, the rig waiting outside the hotel. All he had to do was snap the picture and run. Did you get a look at him? Well, no, the, the flash kind of blinded our eyes for a minute, Jared, you know, and it, it all happened so fast. And you're sure there were no witnesses? It was 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, how about outside? Could anyone have seen him use the ladder? No, not even the town drunk was up that late. Oh, it was a mighty clever frame, all right. A married United States senator, traveling alone, meets up with a beautiful widow that he once courted. Well, it fits just as neat as a hook and a boot, hmm? It fits all right. You know what bothers me the most, Jared, is what this scandal could do to your mother's reputation. Just smear it right... Oh, hang my reputation. I've been gossiped about before. But not like this, Victoria. They'll drag your name through the mud in every barbershop, pool hall, saloon, everybody from... From preachers to drunks will be talking about you. My name has probably been mentioned in worse places than saloons. Oh, yes. But the important thing is, how will all this talk affect your chances for re-election? Badly, I'm afraid. If we can do what it did to Andrew Jackson, think what it'll do to Jim. Yes, the political consequences are going to be bad enough, and well, then there's Amelia. Amelia? Sure. The newspapers will blow this up out of all proportion. When she sees that picture in the paper... Oh, surely she won't believe anything like this. You're a beautiful woman, Victoria. And Amelia's known all along that I've been very fond of you. It could worry her, and with... with her heart as bad as it is. Now, wait a minute, Jim. I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's deal with what has happened, not what might. Uh-huh. Now, first of all, I think you should stay here tonight. Here? Right here. The work on the house is almost finished, and you planned to be back here tomorrow anyway, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I can't stay here, Jared, especially after what's happened. Well, people will be gossiping even more than they are now. That's exactly the point, Jim. You've always stayed here. And if you don't stay here now, it's going to make people wonder what you are hiding. Jared is right. Now, think about it, Jim. Think about it. If you do leave here now, what do we do? Just stop talking to each other and ignore each other when we meet? I just don't like to be hamstrung. Now, I'm going to find Dagan, and I'm going to stop this thing before it even starts. If you do that, Jim, without proof, Daggett won't need those pictures. He'll sue you for slander. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe you're right. All right. I'll stay here. Because if I go back to that hotel, I'd probably run into him and... You know me and my short fuse. Exactly. So you just sit tight. I'll check around town tomorrow. I've got some pretty good informants. One of them might know something. Fine. Thanks, Jared. <laughs> Just try to remember, waiting has never been one of my strong points. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm holding here in my hand weighs less than half an ounce. By measurement, no more than an inch and a half across. It's small. But nobody can tell me how hard a man has to work to earn one of these. Because you see, my family were farmers. And at a very early age, believe me, I learned what it took to put a dollar away in my jeans. I'll tell you something, I haven't forgotten that. I'm not ashamed to say that I value money. And I can't spend a dollar, mine or yours, without first knowing where that dollar is going 
on whether I'm going to get a full dollar's value in return. And I'm distressed, my friends. I am appalled by some of the men in our government who squander our taxes as if it were so much corn seed, who, instead of being the guardians of our money, are ready to pour it out in all kinds of wild, fanciful schemes. Now, you take my opponent, Senator Bannett, for example. Now, this man argues that building aqueducts is progressive, is far-seeing. There's no such thing, my friends. It is as reckless an idea as I've ever heard, and in the end could bankrupt this whole state. Now, that's not a far-seeing idea, is it? Senator Bannett is no visionary. I'll tell you what he is. Senator Bannett is a man of incredible impulse. We all know of his record of impulsive acts, the gun duels, the fist fights. Only the other night at the hotel, he almost battered a man senseless. Now, some of you may admire behavior like that, but I want to tell you that rashness has no place in the Senate of the United States. We don't want a hair-trigger temper in our representatives, my friends. We want stability. We don't want scandal. We want dignity. We want sanity. And if you agree with me, and you know how to mark your ballot, defeat this man, my friends. Show him the only trigger we respect is the vote. Thank you. Thank you. Jared. Hello, Will. Oh, thanks, Sam. Give my best to your wife. Haven't seen you in quite a while. How have you been? Busy. Especially with the elections and all. I can imagine. I don't suppose I can count on Barclay's support. Afraid not, Will. Politically, we're still on opposite sides of the fence. Well, that's what makes horse races and elections. I guess so. Oh, uh, I didn't see Banner at breakfast this morning. I understand he cut quite a figure in the dining room last night. How was he? When I see him, I'll ask. Answered a whistle and, well, ever since you left. Hey, that's it, huh? Yes, you're gonna hate to leave, you know. We, we sheriffed a lot of trails together, me and Sombrano. But then, uh, if I shouldn't win the election, I wouldn't have to leave, and that'd be kind of a bright spot, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, I see Sombrano still remembers you. I oh. <laughs> sure did. Great old boy, ain't he, huh? Just as sleek and sassy as ever. I bet you he can still outrun anything in sight. Well, now, I don't ever remember him outrunning Misty Girl. Well, he never really tried. You know, he didn't want to discourage her. That has all the earmarks of a challenge. It is. You got a race. Length of the pasture and back? All right. He's getting my saddle out of the barn. Oh, uh, do you think uh, Misty Girl will be able to make it to the end of the pasture and back? Oh, let's go. <laughs> Did you find out anything? I've only had one day. No luck then, Jared, huh? Not yet, Jim. I checked the hotel. The room next to yours wasn't rented. Well, then he must have had a pass key. And what about the valise and that the camera tripod? What did the desk clerk say about that? There wasn't any. The room was undisturbed. I checked with the housekeeper when she went in this morning to dust. But that's impossible. We both saw the equipment. Obviously, he had an accomplice. Now, somebody else had to be registered at that hotel to cover up his tracks for him. That brings us right back to Daggett. Not necessarily, Nick. 
This might answer a few questions for us, Jim. It was left at the hotel desk this morning for you while the clerk was off duty. Yeah, you're right. It certainly does. Here you are, Jim. I'll have you saddled up in just a minute. You forget the saddle. Take a look at this. Where'd this come from? We don't know. It was left at the hotel this morning. You still suggest we wait, Jard? Yes, I do. This picture gives us motive, but not proof. You know, one time when I was sheriff, a bunch of riffraff tried to frame me for cattle rustling so they could grab this little gold diggings I was working, you know? I didn't have any proof then either until I beat the truth out of one of them. Jim, you're not a local sheriff anymore. You can't afford that kind of direct action, and you know it. Well, it's better than sitting around waiting for that trap to close. Look, I kept my mouth shut because you asked me to. But I'm not going to let a thing like this be passed around. Nick, you so much as go near Daggett, and it's going to give even more validity to that picture. Now, I'm telling you, as a lawyer, if you do anything foolish, the opposition is going to welcome it. I'm not going to withdraw from this election, no matter what. So, Jared, you go ahead and get the proof. I don't care how. And get it fast. Tom? This hour? Business or pleasure? Business, but uh, somehow I think it's going to turn out to be a little pleasure. Like breaking into Daggett's office, trying to find those pictures? And the plate that made him. You know what Jared said about direct action? Oh, now, Heath, you know I'm no politician. That doesn't apply to me. Well, his office is in the middle of town. That's pretty risky, Nick. Then stay home. What makes you think I'm going? Because you don't trust me. That's right. Uh-huh. I'll saddle up. Uh-huh. I don't believe you gentlemen had an appointment. But then, perhaps you Barclays are in the habit of calling in the middle of the night. This isn't exactly a call, Judge. Oh? Well, what then? Oh, yes, apparently you were searching for something. May I ask what? Quit playing possum, Daggett. You know what we're here for. The pictures of my mother and Jim Bannard. Pictures? That's right. Pictures? Gentlemen, amaze me more and more. I'm a jurist, not a photographer. Breaking and entering is a criminal offense. I'm surprised you Barclays would stoop to it. We're surprised you'd stoop to blackmail. That's a serious accusation to make without proof. As a lawyer, I'd advise you against repeating it. Unless you want even more trouble than you have now. The sheriff will be passing on his round soon. You know, I've known your family for years. I'd hate to do anything shall we say, to embarrass you. So I suggest you leave before he arrives. Jared 
heard no sense you getting all riled up. You're just trying to help. Help? Help who? Daggett? You certainly didn't help Jim. Well, at least we did something. We didn't sit around and talk Who's about it. Whose hair-brained idea was this, anyway? It sounds like one of yours. No, 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 wait a minute. Well, what makes a bad you idea? think Daggett is going to be stupid enough to leave those pictures in his office? If he has got them, they're going to be in a safer place than that. What happened? Go ahead, Nick. Tell her. All right, what is it? Well, Heath and I ransacked Daggett's office tonight. Ransacked it? Did you get the pictures? All they got was caught. Caught? No, 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 wait a minute. Don't blame Heath. It was all my doing. He only went along with it because he couldn't talk me out of it. Where is Heath? Down in the stable, unsaddling the horses. Nick, you've really done it this time. Not only have you broken the law, but you've handed Daggett a nice present all wrapped up in blue ribbons. Well, now, if he isn't involved with the pictures, he knows now that we've got something to hide. And if he is involved, he knows that we're scared. Yes, we sure messed up things. Didn't That's we? putting it mildly. With your kind of help, you've already got him elected. Jared, I admitted we made Nick, a... you are the most stubborn, mule-headed... Wait a minute. That'll be enough of that. All right, boys. All right, all right. Now, you listen to me. We're a family. Mistakes or not, we stand together. Now, I suggest we all go to bed, get a good night's rest, and discuss this in the morning when we're calmer. You're right. I'm sorry, Nick. I, I guess I got a little carried away. Well, I guess we both did. Let's turn in. Good night, Mother. Jim. Good night. Good night. Sure. Victoria, the last thing in the world I want to do is cause any bitterness between your sons. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's gonna be like old times, isn't it, huh? Hmm? You and me riding out together? Come on. Come on, boy. Come on. <laughs> Jim! Well, now, where in blazes is he going? Probably going for a ride. This early in the morning? Sure, best time of day to go. Maybe we best follow him. Nick, I think we better mind our own business for a change. No. Yeah, well. All right. Well, this is an incriminating picture. I don't wonder that you and the Barclays are concerned about it. You deny seeing this picture before? Are you insinuating that I have? It was pretty obvious from the message on it that the opposition party's behind this. And you are the opposition, Daggett, whether you're willing to admit it or not. Bannard, you seem to be making a pretty serious accusation. I hope you're prepared to prove it. I'm prepared to back it up with action. Ah, action. <laughs> My dear Senator, without proof, that will be as indiscreet as being photographed in your hotel room with Victoria... Who said it was my hotel? Well, is that the obvious place? I simply assume that you and... Uh... Is it obvious? Well, Victoria had a room in the hotel, too. How do you know it wasn't in her room? Your room, her room, what difference does it make? The point is, you finally slipped up. You've finally been caught in something that'll show the voters what an unprincipled man you what are. A liar and a blackmailer, Daggett. I might not be able to prove it, but one thing, I'm not going to stand still for a smear campaign. If you're going to try and discredit me, you're going to have to do it not only in public, but at gunpoint. Do you understand me, Daggett? At gunpoint. Violence. You think that's the answer to everything, don't you, Bennett? Violence. Well, I'll tell you something. It isn't going to work this time. You're not going to force me into a gun duel with you, no matter what you do. I'll be waiting for you tomorrow morning. At the south edge of town, Daggett. And if you're not there, I'm going to come and get you. If you do, you'll meet the sheriff. The sheriff won't be able to keep me away from you forever. Tomorrow morning. I want to remember, the only man who's going to withdraw from this election will be the dead man.
Ah, finally. I was beginning to think you weren't coming, Gil. I wouldn't have if your message hadn't said it was so important. It's risky meeting this close to town. I didn't have any choice. I want some more prints of that picture right away. I told you to let me make more than just two copies. I didn't think I was going to have to use them. But Bannard refuses to withdraw. Here's the plate. I want enough prints for every newspaper in the state. All right, but you'll have to pick them up. I'm not coming out here from Oxville again. With a man like Bannard involved, it's just too dangerous. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm driving to Sacramento in the morning. I'll pick them up at your shop on my way. Oh? Our original deal was for $200? That's right. This will cost you a little extra. What are you talking about? Our deal included as many prints as I wanted, and you know it. It didn't include two trips. All right, I'll give you another $50. 150 sounds more like it. 150? Bannard would probably be willing to pay even more. All right. You just better make those prints legible. Or you don't get a cent. Your clerk said you'd be back in a few minutes, so I decided to wait. I presume you came for the same reason Banner did. Jim was here? Oh, yes. A couple of hours ago. He showed me that rather, shall we say, interesting picture of the two of you. I didn't know he was planning to discuss this with you. We discussed nothing. He insulted and threatened me. That picture is a fraud, Will. I came here to ask you to put a stop to it. Indeed. And what makes you think I could? Well, it may not be your doing, but obviously someone in your party is behind it. And with your influence, you could certainly put a stop to it. Last night, your sons ransacked my office, accused me of arranging for the picture. Now you come in and ask me for my help. What Nick and Heath did was wrong. But they were trying to end a vicious smear, and so should you. No matter what you think about Jim, I can't believe that you would condone such dishonest tactics to defeat him. Jim Bannett is an impractical man with plans that will ruin this whole state. He's also a violent, unprincipled killer. He proved that today when he threatened my life. I feel that anything which defeats him is a service to the people. Then you're willing to allow this fraud to go through? Fraud? I wasn't in that hotel room, Victoria. Only you and Bannard were. You'll regret that, Victoria. Believe me. I doubt it. Victoria? You can tell your Senator Bannett I won't be at the edge of town tomorrow morning. I'll be driving to Sacramento. By the time I arrive, I'll expect word of his withdrawal from this campaign. I knew we disagreed on politics, Will, but not on principle. Obviously, I was wrong. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Victoria. Breakfast will be ready. What are you doing? You said Jacket was driving to Sacramento this morning. I'm going after him. With those? Mm -hmm. That message he sent was a threat, Victoria. It was carefully disguised, yes, I'll admit, but nevertheless, a threat. So are those pistols. At least they're honest. Daggett is not going to fight a duel with you. He told you that yesterday. And I'll just have to make him change his mind.
want, Bennett? Victoria gave me your message, Daggett. I'm here to give you one last chance to settle this thing honorably. Honorably? Why, well, I couldn't outdraw you and you know it. All right? We'll even the odds. I'll give you first shot with a dueling pistol. You're even more of a fool than I thought you were. I don't deal in guns. Get out of my way, Bynard. Very well. You leave me no choice. But uh, first, I'm going to have to relieve you of those pictures. Leave me of nothing! He's dead, Jim. Got to find those pictures. Nothing. You must be in his valise. to be in here. Right. One. There's got to be more than one. It's just, it just doesn't make sense. Maybe the sheriff will find more. What are you talking about? A man is dead, Jim. We have to report it. Do you, do you know what that could mean? Huh? But they'll accuse me of murder. But it was an accident. I saw it. You saw it. You, the compromised woman. The woman who was photographed in my hotel bedroom in the middle of the night. Don't you realize what the prosecution can do with that? But the picture is a fraud. All we have to do is find the photographer. The photographer has gone. Victoria, don't you... Will you please just listen to me? But you see, without a witness, your testimony means absolutely nothing. Huh? Why, they just tear you to pieces. They say you are lying to protect your lover. They might even accuse you of being an accomplice. No. No, the best thing for us to do is just... just walk away. Walk away? Sure. There's nothing here to connect us with Daggett. No pictures. No nothing. They'll find the body. They'll assume it was a robbery, and... nobody will ever know any different. We'll know it, Jim. Victoria. If it was only my life that's at stake, or my political career, I wouldn't ask you to do this. But there's no point in reporting this now to the sheriff. Daggett's dead. We can do nothing for him. But if I have to go through a murder trial, even though I won't be convicted, but the excitement, the tension, it could... It could very well kill Amelia. I'm sorry, Jim. I can't withhold evidence. 
Even for Amelia. Well, what are you doing? I won't let you do it, you understand? You can't! I won't! The big... Jordan. Oh. Forgive me. Please, I... just lost control of... Do what you have to do. Anybody here? With you in a minute. Good evening, ma'am. What can I do for you? Now, don't pretend you don't know me. We met the night you delivered that note. Note? I don't understand. There must be some mistake. There's no mistake, and you know it. How'd you find me? Judge Daggett is dead. This picture was found in his valise. Daggett is dead? It was an accident. What kind of accident? Was Bannard involved? But it didn't happen the way you think. I saw it. Now, I need your help. Unless I can prove that this picture is a fraud, my testimony won't mean a thing. Oh, no. I'm not getting mixed up in any murder. I've got enough trouble. You're indirectly responsible for this tragedy. One man is dead and another's life is at stake. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Not when it's him or me. You know, just being part of a blackmail plan is a jail offense. And it wouldn't be my first one. All right. If you won't testify willingly, I'll have you subpoenaed. Mm -mm. I'm getting out of here just as fast as I can. You won't get very far. Once I report this, every sheriff in this state will be after you. Oh. Well, we... We can't have that, can we? Not for a while. Not for quite a while.
Sure, it would get back. And as spooky as a cow pony with a burr under his blanket. Can't even write a letter to Amelia. Would you like me to write to her? No. Oh, thank you, Victoria. The words will come. I... Maybe I'd be better off to wait until we hear what Gil had to say. Victoria, suppose he won't admit that the picture was a fraud. You know, he can say that Daggett hired him just to get a picture, proof that we were lovers. We won't be any better off than we were before. But Jared has the note Gil wrote the night he took the picture. He can't deny his own handwriting. Well, in his boots, he'd be smart to deny everything and stick to it. Jared's handled tougher cases than this. He'll break them down. I hope so. You could pour me one of those, Jim. Jared, I thought you'd never get back. I'm sorry it took so long, but that photographer was a little tougher to crack than I thought. But did he confess? All of it. Oh, Jim. Thank you, Jared. Thanks. It was my pleasure. Of course, there'll be an inquest, maybe even a trial. But with Gil's testimony and Mother as an eyewitness, you haven't got a thing in this world to worry about. Well, Jim, it looks like your chances for re-election are better than ever. Provided, of course, that the voters are willing to accept the testimony on its face value. Well, of course they'll accept it. They like you. And what was it you said that night at dinner? That you... you wanted to be part of the dust and the dream. Jim, I think these voters want that dust irrigated. And they figure you're the only man who can do it. I hope you're right, Jared. I sincerely want to be a part of this state's destiny. You will, Jim. You will. I'll drink to that. Charlie, you keep on getting off over his head like that. You're gonna end up spoiling. <laughs> Maybe we don't fall until tomorrow. Chico, unsaddle him and put him up, will you? Oh, yes, sir. You think you'll be up to it tomorrow, huh? <laughs> you take it easy, Charlie. Let him just inside the tack room. Oh, it's gonna take some doing to break that animal. There's a beauty, though. He's gonna make a fine cut, North. Perdona me. Who do I talk to about the job? I do the hire on Nick Barclay. My name is Juan Molina, senor. Glad to know you. What kind of work you do? Mostly I am a wrangler. Mm -hmm. Can you break horses? A little, senor. Well, we got about 30 of them. We got to iron out. How about that one over there? Like to show me what you can do? See? Si. Hank, have Chico saddle up that horse again. No saddle, please. What? Just a hackamore. Chico, let this man have a try at that horse. And no saddle, just a hackamore. He's riding him. He's all yours, amigo. Where to suerte. <laughs> I'm your friend. Easy, easy. I'm not going to hurt you. Trying to break them Indian style. Looks like. Heard about it, never seen it done. How are you now, my beautiful friend?
about that. He did it. Have you ever seen anyone break a horse like that? Si, senorita. Once. A long time ago. But that man, he is dead now. Or so people say. I wish you'd been here earlier. I've never seen anything like it. What? Breaking a horse Indian style. Oh. Well, now, where'd you ever learn to bust a bronc like that? From an uncle who's learning from the Comanche, senor. Ah. Oh, mother. Mother, this is Juan Molino. This is my mother, Miss Bartley. Huh? How do you do, Mr. Molino? I am honored, senora. And my sister, Audra. How do you do? You were wonderful with the horse. You really missed something, senora. So I heard. Perhaps you'll give me an opportunity to see you at work some other time. It will be my privilege, senora. If you want the job, you got it. It pays 40 in beans. You can start right now, if you like. Gracias, senora. But first, uh, I must pick up some gear I left in Stockton. Well, you can start as soon as you get back. How's that? Muchas gracias. De nada. Mucho gusto, senora. They could get this horse, amigo. Muy bien. Vista, señorita. Benito, I'm going to take this to the dressmaker. I'll meet you back here. Muy bien, señorita. Now, that ain't very polite. Let's go. I was about thanking me by having a drink with my friend and me. He said, let's go. We could have a real good time. The lady alone, senores. Let her go. You'd better mind your own business. I am going to tell you only once more. Let me go. Getting something, senores. Apologize to the senorita. Apologize, senores. Sorry, miss. Benito, would you please take this to the dressmakers for me? Seguro, come on home. Thank you. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't come along. I'm very happy I was here, senorita. Apparently, you're as good with the gun as you are with horses. I much prefer horses, senorita. Now that you are all right, I will... I'd like to ask a favor of you. Of course, senorita. Anything. I have a horse. His name is Ladino. He's a... Ladino? The one who went wild? Yes. Well, he was foaled on our ranch, but he got away and ran with a herd of wild horses until my brothers caught him. His bloodline goes back to a horse named Steel Dust. Steel Dust? Well, you've heard of him? Anyone who... Heard anything about horses? Has heard of steel dust, senorita? Well, I want to make Ladino even more famous than steel dust. We could start by entering him at the state fair. We? Oui? Well, that's the favor I was going to ask you. Could you help me break and train him? Of course, senorita. It's a great honor. But perhaps your brother. It's all right with my brother. Well, well, 
When do we start? Tomorrow? Muy bien. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, senorita. Just like that. Hey, you guys need some of that time for me, huh? Have a good time, boys. Ay, 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 chihuahua! What the devil happened to you? You look pretty good, huh? Good, you look beautiful. Hey, you had a bath, too. <laughs> no, my <laughs> Where do I sleep? Ahí, amigo. Hey, we heard about you stopping those two fellows from bothering Miss Andra. Benita told us. They were... Drunk. Still, I would like to have seen it. Pow! <laughs> How about riding into town with us? No. Gracias. I've done too much riding for one day. As soon as I take care of my horse, I go to sleep. Going to sleep? The guy that goes to bed on Saturday night? How do you figure that? I'll see you later. Take care of the girls for me. All of them. <laughs> Did you see it? See what? That scar. The scar on the right cheek. Well, what about it? He had one, just like that. Who? And he could break in a horse, Indian style. And handle a gun, just like he was a part of himself. It's been 15 years. The man changes. But I know it's him. Who are you talking about? Joaquin. Joaquin. Joaquin Murrieta. Talking with the others. I came back. Well, then go to bed. I came back to talk to you. What about? You don't remember me. But I knew you in San Andreas. I worked in the cantina. The first time I saw you was right after those gringos had killed your wife. The night you swore that you would kill them, every man who had touched her. And when gringos hanged your brother, Elena Santos came to live with my sister. What are you talking about? You remember Elena. She loved your brother very much. Elena, she still works in San Andreas in the cantina. And Look, old man, you've got me mixed up with somebody else. I've never been in San Andreas. And I've never been married and, and have no brothers. And I don't know anybody named Elena. You do not have to worry. The gringos, they will never suspect who you are. They want to believe Joaquin Murrieta is dead. Joaquin Murrieta. We have been waiting for you. Hundreds of us. We knew you would come back someday. Hombres from all over. Ready to ride with you again. <laughs> What's the matter with you, huh? You had too much tequila, huh? Joaquin Murrieta is dead. No. He's been dead for many years. The gringos killed him. You are Joaquin. Listen to me, old man. You're wrong. I am not Joaquin. Do you understand? Do you? Put out the light. Gracias, señorita. See you in Latina. You were right, señorita. He's a beautiful animal. Watching him, I, I almost wish we didn't have to take his freedom from him. But then, 
Then? <laughs> but then I remembered he belongs to you, and what does a lucky horse like that have to complain about? <laughs> Senorita, uh, soon it'll be El Cinco de Mayo and, and the big fiesta to celebrate it. Will you be going? Probably. Oh. Well, then, perhaps I... I will see you there. And you will do me the honor of having a dance with me. Are you a good dancer? Uh, well, I... I don't like the boat. Uh, well, maybe we could have more than one dance. Shall we get to work? Si, si. Enseguida. Look at you. Pete. Sorry. Well, he looks like he's been harnessed all of his life. Who's hurt that? I don't know. Maybe we better take a look. Oh, Pete. I found him like that. His horse must have thrown him. He's... Yeah. Well, we better uh, get the wagon, get him on back to town. A man works for us for five years and we know nothing about it. Here's something. Where do you suppose he's kept this after all these years? I remember talking to him once about Murrieta. To Benita and a lot of others. Murrieta was a hero, a sort of... Oh, sort of a Robin Hood avenging all the wrongs done to himself and his people. And it's a strange thing. Benita never believed it was Murrieta who was killed in Priest Valley. What do you think? I don't know. I... I never gave it enough thought to have an opinion. Well, I'll go up in the attic and see if I can find something to put these things in. Oh, uh, excuse me, senorita. Oh, Juan, you don't have to go. Mother and I are just going through Benito's things to see if we can find the name of someone to notify. We found this in his Bible. It seems as though Benito didn't believe Joaquin was ever killed. Benito was an old man, senorita. And things got mixed up in his head. Joaquin was struck down like an animal. And like an animal, his head was cut off by the gringos and, and put in display like a trophy of the hunt. Horrible. Horrible? Why horrible, senorita? Joaquin was a thief and a killer. No matter that he stole and killed only after the gringos had attacked and murdered his wife. After all, why should Joaquin have had any feelings? He was just another greaser. Don't use that word. I'm sorry. Nobody on this ranch is considered any better or worse than anyone else. Please, accept my apologies. Good evening, Fred. Good evening, Victoria. Come in. I'm sorry to bother you this time of night, but there is something I would like to talk to you about. Of course. What is it? That's a telegram Benita sent this morning, addressed to a woman named Elena Santos over in San Andreas. Now, all it says is, El Patrio is alive. El Patrio? The Patriot? Yeah. Mean anything to you? Well, if I remember correctly, that's what some of Murrieta's friends used to call him. Oh, surely you don't think Murrieta is still alive. Well, not exactly, but Alina Santos did know Joaquin. She was the girlfriend of Murrieta's brother, Claudio. Until I read this telegram, I had no reason to believe that Benito hadn't been killed in a fall from his horse. But now you do. Well, not, uh, not necessarily, but Doc Marar says he could have been killed by a blow from the butt of a rifle or something like that, so I just 
Well, I ought to have a talk with the vaquero who found Benito's body. Juan Molina, why? Well, Victoria, suppose Molina really is Murrieta. He'd want to keep that a secret, wouldn't he? And you think Juan killed Benito because Benito found out who he was? It's possible, isn't it? Oh, now, Fred, aren't you reaching for something way out on the end of a limb? Nick, there are a lot of important people who don't believe that was really Murrieta that Captain Love and his rangers killed. But the state paid Captain Love and his rangers the reward. Wells Fargo refused to pay the reward it had posted, and so did most of the other banks. Now, I would like to have a talk with Juan Molina. All right, come on. Hey, Molina, we could use some fresh money in this game. I gave up gambling a long time ago. Juan. Si, senor. Will you step out here a minute, please? Juan Molina? This is Sheriff Madden. He wants to ask you a few questions. What do you want to know? Does the name Elena Santos mean anything to you? Benito sent her a telegram telling her that Joaquin Murrieta is alive. So? What does that have to do with me, senores? You lived all your life in the galleys, huh? See. Si. What are you saying, then? You think I am Joaquin Murrieta? No, I'm not too sure. I know what the sheriff's saying, Juan. I want to know why Benito sent this telegram. Oh, Fred, Benito's an old man. He was imagining things. Maybe. Sheriff, to you, to all North Americanos, Joaquin Murrieta was a bandido and a murderer. And that is true. But, but why, senores? Huh? What made him what he was? His brother was lynched for a crime he did not commit. His wife was attacked and killed. And not by one man, but by 13 filthy, drunken gringos. Rosita was only 17, senores, and she was so, so beautiful. But not after those swines were through with her. And then they, they stomped and bit Joaquin and left him for dead. But he would not die. A bandido, a murderer. He was much more than that to me, senores. He was a man who fought back for himself, for, for Rosita, for his people. You flatter me, if you think I am Joaquin. It is an honor to be mistaken for him. But that is what it is, senores. A mistake. I'm not Joaquin Morieta. Supposed to be riding fence today? Yeah. Forget it. I want you to pull the Mustangs out of Shadow Canyon. All right. Juan Molina will give you a hand. Molina? That's right. Something the matter? Yeah. Well? I don't know why the sheriff was out here last night, Nick. All the men do. Go on. Well, I ain't talking for nobody but myself. Will you get to the point, Hank? The point is, I think you ought to get rid of him. Fire him? Yeah. What for? Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I thought something was funny about Molina right from the start. He stays to himself. He don't talk. He won't go to town. So what does that prove? Maybe nothing, maybe a lot. But if the sheriff thinks maybe he's Joaquin Marietta, that's good enough for me. Well, it's not good enough for me. And no one, you or anyone else, is going to tell me who I can hire and who I can fire. Now you get to work. I'm not going to work with Molina. And I'm not going to live in the same bunkhouse with him. I saw what Marietta did to some men once up in Spanish flats. He went kill crazy just like that. And... Well, it wasn't very pretty, Nick. And the same thing could happen around here. That is, if he is Marietta. I've been with you a long time. But if that guy Molina stays, I go. Well, looks like I came by just in time to wish you adios. Now you get your gear and get out of here. anyone else that feels the same way you do, you tell them to come by the house. I got their pay waiting for them, too. Good morning, Juan. You're not going to ride Ladino this morning, senorita? No, I have some errands to do in town. I'd like you to drive me. 
Would you get the buggy, please? Bien. Senorita, perhaps it would be better if one of the other men would drive it to town. I asked you. But there is so much talk. I know all about the talk. Hank Mitchell spread most of it out of spite because Nick fired him. But people believe it. But then they're fools. You're not afraid of me, senorita. Do I have any reason to be? <laughs> no. Then will you get the buggy, please? Muy bien. You going to town? Yes, I've asked Juan to drive me. Oh? Yes, I want to show the people in town that we don't believe the suspicion about him. Oh, it is all right, isn't it? You bet it's all right. Good morning, Victoria. Sarah? Audra? Good morning. Miss Santos, this is Mrs. Barkley and her daughter, Audra. This is Elena Santos, the lady that Benito Flores sent the telegram to. She just got in on the stage from San Andres. What brings you to Stockton, Miss Santos? The sheriff. I sent her a letter, asked her to come over and take a look at that vaquero of yours. I trust that's all right with you? As a matter of fact, it is not all right with me, Sheriff. However, I can't speak for one. Audra, would you get him, please? I'm here, senora. This is the man? <laughs> No, this man is not Joaquin. Are you sure? Yes. Look at him again. I do not need to look at him again. I am sure he is not Murieta. A second ago, you weren't quite so sure. But I am now. Juan, would you get the buggy, please? Victoria, take my advice and get rid of that. Juan isn't Marietta, I know that. But I had a feeling that woman was lying. So did I, Audra. So did I. Mustangs need breaking. Think maybe we can get to it tomorrow? Si, senor. Here you had another visit from the sheriff yesterday. You brought a woman called Elena Santos. Yeah, I know. Audra told me all about it. But we'll be going down to Mexico in a few weeks to buy some cattle. Think maybe we can have those Bronx ready for the remuda? Seguro, senor. Como no? We'll be trailing the herd back through your hometown. I always like to stop in the Gallus myself to see a friend of mine. The Alcalde, you know. See. Si. Luciano Tejada. Yeah. Fine ranch he has down there. El Rancho Cañada de San Miguel. San Antonio. So now you started wondering about me too, eh, senor? No, just checking. May I ask a question, senor? Go ahead. What if you knew that I was Joaquin Murrieta? And what if you knew that for 15 years, I had been drifting from one place to another, working as a vaquero, and not wanting anything except to live in peace. If you knew that, senor, what would you do? Would you turn me over to the sheriff? But why, senor? Why would it be so important for you to see me hanged after all these years? Are you telling me you're Marietta? No, senor. But now that you've started wondering about me, you won't stop. Oye, amigo. Dígame. There was a hombre here looking for you. Quien? I never saw him before. He left a note for you on your bunk. Gracias. De nada.
This way. What is that game? It's not a game. I am looking into your future. What does it say? The cards see you riding at the head of a large band of caballeros. They see you and your men raiding the ranches of the gringos, stealing their cattle and their horses. They see you robbing their banks and their stagecoaches and their trains. The cards see Joaquin Murieta alive. The cards are wrong. You are here. I am Juan Molina. And that names mean nothing to the cards. They know the truth. The people know the truth. Go out to the bar. Look into the eyes of the young hombres. Walk the streets, Joaquin. See how the people stare. They know. El Patrio is alive. Benito said it. And somebody heard him and that made it true. You cannot change that. It is Ado. I don't believe in fate. Put your cards away, senorita. Joaquin is dead. Hasta luego, Joaquin. No. Well? He will be back. You will ride with him. You and many more. We've been waiting for you. Here, my friend, are going to take you somewhere and learn you some manner. I'll get off from that horse. A friendy? Yeah, you do. Last time we met, you talked pretty good. Yeah, and just in case them stories we've been hearing about you are true, we're going to drop your head off right in front of the sheriff's office. Now get out! <laughs> Do you know why the sheriff is here? Yes. The man with him is lying, senorita. I would be hanged. I would be hanged unless you help me. How? Tell the sheriff I didn't kill the man. Tell him I, I couldn't have killed him. So it will be your word against that hombres. And you will be the one the sheriff will believe. I don't understand. How could I tell the sheriff that you... Senorita, you could tell him that after you came to your room tonight, you slipped out to meet me. Why don't you say that we were together until a few minutes ago. You're not serious. Senorita, please. No. My life is at stake. No. Why, senorita? Because the reputation of a fine Anglo lady like yourself is, is more important than the life of a mestizo like myself. I wouldn't tell such a story for anybody. Anybody! So tell your brother to, to stop wondering about me. I am walking. Coggins. Yeah. You know, my brothers and I, we've been looking all over town for you. I guess I just happened to be the lucky one. Funny thing happened last night. Well, we were out hunting all over the ranch for Molina or Marietta or whoever he is. He was right there in the house having a little talk with my sister. Oh, maybe you remember Audra. Audra says Molina claims he killed your friend in self-defense. Well, he's a liar.
Now, now, look, Keith, I don't want you breaking up the plan. Now, Harry, this should cover all the damages. I'm warning you, mister. You better leave me alone. <laughs> Gringo has admitted he lied. What interest is that to me? Well, I was hoping you'd know where Melina is. Why should I know? That hombre means nothing to me. Well, if you happen to see him, would you tell him he's in the clear? If I see him. Joaquin, one of the Barclays, the one called Heat, was here looking for you. What did he want? He works with the sheriff. So do his brothers. He said he wants to be watching up front when they hang you. Everybody in Stockton is laughing at them, and they intend to make you pay for it. It is true. They want to see your head in a jar. Juan, they say you are Joaquin Murieta. How many men will ride with me tonight? Tonight? against the Barkley Rancho. I tell you, for the last time, go back to Stockton. And I answer for the last time, que no. I want to pick out some pretty clothes from the wardrobes of the senora and senorita. No, you stay here with the horses. The vaqueros were paid today. They will be in town. The Barclays have much wealth, and that is ours. But we leave the cattle, the horses, except for one, Ladino. And he is mine. I think she'll be all right for the night. Let's go back to the house. Melina. Give up. Nick, behind you.
Dias. Joaquin Murieta. He just... He just died, Miss Santos. But he could have been Joaquin. Meaning he wasn't? I wanted him to be. And for a little while, he was. Even he believed it. Why was that so important to you? So he would help me. So he would help me pay you gringos back for what you did to Claudio, the man I loved. Fifteen years is a long time to hate. It's also a long time for a woman to be without the man she loved. who doubted him. I know. And I could have saved him. Could you? I wonder. 